Um, is this your, if this is your first time opening ZBrush, um, it may be a little bit overwhelming, so I want to give you an idea of some of the things that will happen. So if you just start working with ZBrush and you just start dragging in the environment, um, you're going to see this crazy cube thing happening and it's going to quickly get like kind of ridiculous. Um, ZBrush has a few useful hotkeys that are worth keeping in mind. Uh, one of them to start off with, because we want to make sure that we're doing this properly. Um, if you ever uh, create something that you don't actually want to work with, um, what you can do is hit Control N, and it will basically clear out the canvas. Um, so just really quickly to give you a broad overview of how ZBrush works, um, I'm going to go into the tool panel, um, and I'm going to bring up a Sphere 3D. So I'm going to drag a sphere. Um, now, in order to start editing this, so you'll notice if I just keep dragging spheres out, um, this is kind of what they refer to as the 2.5D view. Um, so you create these kind of like pseudo 3D objects. Um, and it's not really super useful because you create all of these pieces and then you're just like, oh, I'm just doing this forever. Like, what, what does this accomplish? Um, so let's go ahead and hit Control N. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a single one out. And then I'm going to hit the T key on the keyboard or the edit button at the top here. And now I actually have an editable object that I can start working with by itself. Um, so this is actually not a, a terribly complicated uh, process, but it is a little unintuitive at first. So um, now let's talk about uh, navigating in ZBrush. So um, first of all, navigating in ZBrush works better uh, with a tablet than it does um, with a keyboard and mouse. I'm using a keyboard and mouse right now, and I mean, it doesn't severely limit you, but you are going to find out that you get a lot of mileage out of having pressure sensitivity with a tablet. So um, if I hold anywhere in the canvas, um, I will rotate around an object that I'm looking at. If I hold down Alt and then I click in the canvas, it's going to move around. Um, if I hold down Alt, click on the canvas, and then release Alt, I can zoom in and out. Um, and this is one of those things that's important to keep an eye on for ZBrush, is the difference between clicking on the canvas and clicking on an object. So for example, um, if I wanted to start doing some sculpting, um, now I just dragged out this Sphere 3D, and it says to enable sculpting, please convert this 3D primitive to a poly mesh 3D by pressing the Make Poly Mesh 3D button. Um, so that's really simple. It's just up here. There's a in the tool palette. There's a button called Make Poly Mesh 3D. Now, um, once you have that clicked on, then every time you click on this shape, you're going to be making sculpting patterns. Um, now, ZBrush has two different options um, for uh, sculpting at kind of a basic level. There's uh, sculpting into and sculpting out of surfaces. So um, this is selected with the Z add and the Z sub options. Um, but you can also toggle between those options let, by holding down the Alt key. So I can have Z add selected and I can sculpt outward um, and then I can just hit Alt and I can do that. Um, then if I hold down shift, it actually changes the, the brush that I'm working with to a smooth brush. And that gives me the option to have a lot of things at my disposal that are a little bit more, um, more creatively freeing so I don't have to constantly jump between tools. So if I hold down the control key and click on a model, I can actually paint a mask. And then what will happen is that if I sculpt, it will actually just sculpt everywhere that the mask isn't. So you can see how I have this uh, kind of creating like this crater effect here. Um, and uh, then, it, but what's cool is it because ZBrush has a lot of different functionality that is based on whether you're clicking on objects or you're clicking on the canvas. If you hold down control and you click on the canvas, then you can actually make a camera-based 
mask as well. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of really cool options here. Um, one thing that relates to that, uh, because you might often be making masks where you want them to be aligned with your object. Um, if you hold down shift while you rotate, um, so normally you just rotate around freely, but if you hold down shift, you can rotate um, to only exact axes of like up, down, left, right, um, front, back. Um, and so when we're working with our uh, floor and wall pieces, that's going to be useful to us because we can actually align the camera exactly with an object while we're working with it. Um, and then the other thing about uh, masks is if you hold down control and you click um, anywhere in the canvas, then you will uh, actually invert your mask. So remember that the darker area is the area that is masked out, and then the, uh, the lighter colored area is the one that is not. Um, so there's a lot of different types of functionality here, so I'm just going to give you kind of a broad overview, and then we'll jump into some of the cool stuff that I like working with. Um, but OK, so what we're looking at here, um, over at the left, we have the different types of brushes. Um, now, right now what we're using is the standard brush. Um, there's another brush that's fairly common, which is the clay tubes brush, which is similar to the standard brush, but it makes more of a square pattern. Um, but now you'll notice that um, we don't have a whole lot of geometric detail in this surface right now. Um, so one of the things that you'll often be doing is you'll actually be adding subdivisions. Um, so over in the right, there's a geometry button. Um, and we can go ahead and we can actually subdivide our mesh further. Um, now, there's two things that you really need to be aware of. There's the, the divide button, which actually subdivides you down to lower and lower divisions of polys. Um, but then there's also this smooth button, or SMT, which is basically um, allowing you to smooth the mesh and basically make things softer while you're subdividing. And now, uh, that's, that's very useful to have, um, but you have to be careful with it because if you smooth something that you've subdivided, um, you might get it to change shape too quickly. So usually what I do is I subdivide at least a couple of times if I want to make something that's largely hard-edged. So I subdivide without that. So if I were to just divide this once, um, that adds divisions without smoothing it out. But then if I divide it with smooth on, you'll actually see it get smoother. Um, and then basically, this gives us more to work with. Uh, when we're working on our sculpting geometry. So um, now you'll notice that if I'm using the clay tubes brush, you get a much better idea of what the shape of the brush is. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, invert that. Um, and so then also you'll notice that once uh, we have more polygon geometry, we can also smooth it um, and we can get a clearer result that way. Um, so, uh, and I'm just holding down the shift key to do that. Um, okay, so, however, the, the more important thing than just, uh, changing your brushes, and there are definitely a lot of really cool brushes, so like, for example, there's this, uh, it's kind of like rake brush, and actually, hmm. oh, actually, uh, I just noticed, uh, I made, um, I, I made a subdivision only in the area where I was, uh, where it wasn't masked. So um, if you want to remove the mask, you can hold control and just drag a mask on the outside of the environment. Um, so in the canvas, and then if I subdivide there, then it'll subdivide the whole model. Um, so then, like, so there's this brush that's kind of cool, which is like uh, the rake brush, and that kind of makes things that look like scratches and stuff, and um, and that stuff can be pretty cool. Um, there's, uh, let's see, what are some other cool brushes? But, um, oh god, my cats are messing with stuff. There's 
It just knocks my uh, monitor around. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, uh, that's um, a few things to look at. Let's see. Um, there's a smooth valleys brush. Uh, that one. Um, it's okay now. I won't worry about that one. Um, so I'm just going to jump back to the standard brush. Um, now, what's really cool though is that ZBrush also has these things called alphas. Um, and alphas are really where a lot of the meat of making complex edits comes in. Um, because the types of alphas that you use really have the biggest impact on what it is that your um, that your brush is doing. Um, so like if you look, I'm uh, using these different types of alpha shapes here. Um, now, this brings up a couple of important details um, because we have uh, different options for like, so for example, if you adjust the Z intensity, um, you can make things push and pull out more and then uh, that also affects the result of the Z add, the Z sub, and the smooth. Um, you can use focus shift, which is kind of like a fade option. So the more focus shift you have, um, the more uh, concentrated in the center the detail is, and then it kind of gradually falls off. And then um, if you go negative 100, it has a more extreme focus shift. So. Um, Okay, and then there's also the draw size, which is really just basically how big a brush is when you use it. Um, and uh, I think my, my object is really heavily subdivided here. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, so yeah, those are really useful tools, um, but because they're so useful, there's also hotkeys for them. So if you hold down the S key um, and then drag left and right, it will change the size of your brush. If you hold down the O key, you can um, it brings up an option for adjusting your focal shift. Um, and then if you hold down the U key, it brings up your Z intensity. Um, and so that way you can make on-the-fly adjustments. So yeah, um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a primer. Um, there's also another uh, couple of options to keep in mind, um, which is we have uh, stroke. Usually you do dots, which basically just makes a bunch of re repeats of an action. Um, you can also do freehand, and freehand is just uh, more continuous and fluid. Um, there's a spray and color spray, which uh, basically uh, don't follow as much of the contour. Um, and then there's also this drag dot, which... Uh, let me see if I can do this. Uh, we're on a blank space here. Um, so let me smooth this out a little. So with drag dot, essentially what it does is it allows you to like drop whatever it is that you're going to be painting directly into place. Um, and so one way that that might make itself a little bit clearer is if you pick an alpha that is uh, a little bit more descriptive. So like, for example, this, uh, this arrow, if I maybe increase the intensity a little bit. So then you can actually place this arrow in a really specific fashion on the surface rather than... Uh, rather than just drawing a streak. So you can actually just like drop something onto the surface by using an alpha. Um, now all of these options are customizable, uh, but I don't necessarily want you guys to start with that because that'll be a lot more challenging um, to get the ball rolling. 